Shall we play a game? Maybe. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. Voice is working. Where's my head? My head's not here. Hey! Ah, okay, good. Welcome to today's stream, which clearly I have not ever streamed trains before because <laughs> I had to set it up as a source and a bunch of other things. I will be driving this Snow Bunny Express thing, which is an Amtrak train, and apparently it's a real service. Can I look outside? I can look outside. There we go. It sounds a bit loud in my ears. Let me just turn it down for me. Michael says volumes are low. Train or people? Force the train up a bit more. How's that? Hello, Lexic Dark. We've got black screened. Ah. Yeah, that's one of the things about trains. See the crane moving in the top there? It's just kind of cool. Trains does stuff like that, but trains doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't do trains so well. But anyway, we're driving an Amtrak service. Is the rail driver going to work? Mm, that's not promising. Okay, lights don't work. Does anything work? Oop, brakes work. Okay. Shit on the hard work. There we go. Oh, I should put it forward first. Maybe the horn doesn't work. Off we go. Yeah, we call Amtrak Snow Bunny Express. I think that we had a discussion about uh, Pell's when I was firing yesterday and uh, we all decided we didn't play. I've made the game too quite from there now. Oh, I think I might be quite so quiet. This is my fucking home. It's over there. <laughs> is that better? That's probably a lot better. I'm approaching a trigger. Ah. Oh, just catching up with the chat. Hello, Michael. Hello, NJTE. It has been a little while. Hello, Lexic Dark. And you had to reboot. That's never good. NJTE, it's the Amtrak Winter Park Special. Indeed. It runs to some ski mountain park. It does. It's a real service. So we'll just cruise along slowly since there's a set of points coming up. Let's see, remember the keys. There we go. There's two cranes working. It's kind of cool. Oh, now the headlights work. We've got little door lights on all the cars too. Trains has come a little way since I last looked at it. I actually thought I had streamed it before, but I didn't have it as a source, so maybe I deleted it. Or maybe it didn't survive the great rebuild. That's possible. I did have to install the game again recently because it was sad after the great rebuild. Cruising out of Denver. Good news from me is I got through my pre-assessment run successfully yesterday. It was a uh, very challenging day from a firing perspective. And now that I've had my pre-assessment ticked off, I'm now allowed to apply for my assessment, which is a good thing. It was the worst possible day for firing. It was uh, slippery, which meant your fire is getting turned over like it's in a washing machine. So it was quite an interesting day. heading into some yards. I hope this thing knows where it's going. It's 
feels like a very uh, tight curve for 30 mile an hour. It's the kind of curve where everybody shit falls on the floor. How do I do the horn on this thing? Don't tell me I'm going to use these. Hello Neil TV8, how are you? How was the M... Oh, I know you didn't go either. I was going to ask you how the ambassador event was, but I just realised that you didn't actually go either. NJT says, fun fact about Colorado, I think he's going to be rude here. It is sometimes referred to as the weed state since it was the first state in the US to legalise weed. Yeah, it's certainly not the last. One of the things I noticed about... Hang on. I've got that t-shirt on. My stay in Brooklyn, you come out of the subway and it's like, I know that smell. That's the kind of smell that could get me in trouble with customs on the way home. So, what's the difference between train simulator, trains, TSW3 and Run 8? Run 8, the graphics are shit. But the gameplay's physics and the train handling, pretty much spot on. About, about as good as you get. And it has multiplayer, although it's, it's difficult to crack your way into a multiplayer server. Because they are not a friendly bunch at all. Transim World, you're a operator of a train, driver, engineer, pilot, whatever you want to call yourself, you are that person and you are driving or operating your train. So, and you can get out in the world to some extent. Train Simulator Classic, you are the train. You're not driving it, you are the train. Trains is a little like that. Because if you look at where trains has come from... Uh, no, it didn't like that. There we go. The DCC interface for trains, which has now just cut my rail driver off, so I probably shouldn't have done that. But the DCC interface for trains... Train is being brought to a stop. Very good. Now I'll have to reset everything. Off we go again. Shouldn't have switched interfaces. But um, trains actually started out like uh, what's the other game? The other the other model train simulation game. This train started out as a model railroad simulator, and it grew. It still has model railroad routes that you can buy. And if you're wondering what that funny little um, compass thing that turns up is, you can move by right clicking. That's how you swing the camera now. Clearly really doesn't like me to do. I think it can. There we go. We'll see our train any second. Yeah, that would be good to uh, meet Matt and Alex and Jan in person. And all the devs that are in the office. Tons of the devs. I know lots of them through uh, the other things that I do with them. But never having met any of them personally. JT says he's full of fun facts in JT. He does like his fun facts. He says Colorado was the first state to mandate wheelchair lifts in all public transport vehicles, doing so in 1970 after a protest. I'm speeding. Oh dear. Not like me at all. Yeah, I 
I think it's also useful to get assessments on bad condition days. I was chatting with my driver afterwards, who's one of the OJTI drivers, and um, he goes, I couldn't help you because I was busy just trying to manage the loco and the train. But every time I looked over, you had steam and you had water. So well done. <laughs> a good run. It was actually kind of funny because the week before I had quite a poor run and the conditions were easy and this time with the conditions really hard and with a lot riding on it it was great. So, life. The strange things the human brain does to itself. Yeah trains did start out as a virtual model railway thing. It's it's come a long way though I have to say. You, let me sp you are gonna let me spin. Good stuff. It actually looks quite good these days. It still doesn't have quite the most amazing frame rate in the world, but it's not awful. And it adjusts based on your PC, so as your PC gets better, it does more things, it draws more things. It's just funny with American railroads, isn't it? Anywhere near a city, oh, let's go slow. I do like the HUD in trains, one down the bottom, because it's showing me gradients, it's showing me upcoming speeds, it's showing me upcoming signals. It's a pity, at least I don't think you can, I don't think you can turn off the crap on the right hand side and keep the one on the bottom. I'd much rather not have the crap on the right hand side because I'd like to use the train. Ah, time for a bit of acceleration. It's handling, I went up one notch. The Rail Valley's just for fun. All D Rally D Rail Valley is about purely just for fun. Although their train physics are actually relatively good. And they do model some things that the other simulators don't, like explosions. And the re and having explosions and things like that, they'll never be able to associate themselves with an actual livery or brand. Because no brand wants to be associated with explosions. You call Slovakia, I think, the Rail Valley. Somewhere around there, that kind of part of the world. JT is telling us all about the Seven Line. We have streamed the Seven Line previously, and I've ridden it in real life. In the not too distant future, I'll be riding some of the um, Japanese trains that I have streamed. I'm going there. There will actually be two weekends where there are no active train streams. I'll probably make some premieres for those time slots. Just so we don't miss out. Or I could live stream real trains. That could be a possibility. Hello, CNW. Good to see you again. How is everybody going? No jointed rail was part of Searchlight. CNW asks. Will I be doing Amtrak today? Duh! <laughs> we are doing Amtrak. Will I be doing Metro today? No. I don't think there is any Metro in trains. That I've seen, anyway. Now, if this was at a proper American train crossing, about this point, I'd hit a truck. Wow, those gates are slow. 
That's not something you want to see as a driver. The railway gate's closing as you go through the crossing. I have seen the thing about high-speed rail in Texas in JT. If any state could pull that off, it might be that one. These crossings are really slow. They come up on you with a bit of surprise. I might stream off a train, we'll see. The um, Japanese do have rather strict rules about what you can and cannot do on trains. So I'll have to find out whether that would be a possibility or not. I do know of an individual that was arrested for going live on TikTok from a Shinkansen. And even their arrest was live streamed because the cops couldn't figure out how to turn it off. It's kind of funny. Sounds like we're finally starting to climb a hill and the HUD would sort of agree. It's time to go to the mountains, folks. See there what I mean about the frame rate, it gets a bit choppy. That'd be a road. Gates that are too slow. There's another road coming. Do this one properly. Their uh, crossing sound all right. Nice modern crossing. No sooner do we finish one, it's time for the next one. American train horns in the cab yesterday as well. Hello, Violet. How are you? I am okay. You're dragging a train full of ski bunnies. You know the ones. All the people that wear exercise pants that probably shouldn't. JT says California high speed rail is going about slowly. Do you know why? Because California takes about 50 years longer than anyone else in the world to build anything. Because it's California. This feels like rather a fast curve for 60 mile an hour. A bit tight. But that's okay. bit harder now. You 
bad on the sounds, except this would be um, continuous welded rails, so there wouldn't be any clackety clackety clackety. Uh, Violet says I joined your Discord, but it wouldn't let me type. Really? Oh. We'll have to figure that out. That might mean it didn't automatically put you into a role like it's supposed to. Sometimes my robot fails. I'll check that out. NJT says the Japanese also have female only cars which have reasons to not discuss here. Why would you not discuss that? Safety of women is an important topic. In this country, Approximately 50 women die every year from domestic violence murders. Don't be a dick. DNW says that crossing was a day. General signals type 1. There you go. And you're heading off to Adelaide, Violet. That will be excellent. The good thing about Adelaide is you can walk from one end to the other of it in about 10 minutes. Road crossing or signals? That's a road crossing. DNW asks, why does the bell spit when the button is pressed down? I don't know. Maybe it had a mouthful of saliva. You've got a new car, Violet. Excellent. What'd you get? You're getting more coffee. Hi. <laughs> coffee is useful. Especially after yesterday's run where pretty much everything still hurts. NJT says the curve seems tight, but if that curve has super elevation, something trains doesn't have. Actually it does, it does do super elevation now, but I don't think it's out in any routes yet. They've got a couple of new things coming out in the new routes. There's three main things, super elevation's one of them. The other thing they're calling super tessellation, which is high resolution textures. something you don't see in trains very much. Oh, maybe it's not moving. Oh, no, it is. Moving AI. You don't see a lot of moving AI in trains. So that's on the improve. I did read somewhere they've got some better scenario building tools coming up too, which will be good. And their world editor is now collaborative. That was a very nicely timed cross, I have to say. Didn't have to slow down at all. No piled over the tracks back there, good to see. Hello, Aviator the Wolf, how are you? Hello to David Park as well. Hope everybody is happy. Oh, I forgot you've moved back moved into town, haven't you, Violet? Hopefully that went well. No longer out in Melbourne's wild west fringe. And JT says you can see moving air if you program waypoints and spawn trains in. Yeah, you can. But trains hasn't got a timetable as such, so it, um, that still will be done manually.
near the infinite display of unnecessary spending that is Chatty Shopping Centre. Got nice neighbours, that is good. We moved out of Emerald where we knew probably three of the people in the street. The others were just unfriendly. Down here, weirdly enough, in Franganistan, it's actually better. Aviator the Wolf, no trains, does not have safety systems. Doesn't even have the concept. Although most of their displays work, at least. I think some of them you can... Uh, no, this one you can't. Some trains, trains, you can actually press the buttons. Not many like that. Let's get a lot of water here from time to time, judging by that size of that culvert. Yes, chatty. Full of stuff you never know you always needed. Yep, that's about it. You probably don't actually need any of it. figure out if the wheels are actually turning or not. I'm not sure. I kind of think maybe they're not. I think they're turning. Oh well. They solved the wheel blur, blur problem that all straight simulators have. Oh yeah, I forgot you can do this. That's kind of cool. You can uh, zoom. Get a bit more of the countryside in. Aviator the Wolf says, hopefully it's something they implement one day. Like trains as a concept for me, just a few steps up from a mobile train sandbox game. Yeah, it basically is. And guess what? It actually does run on mobile. It makes your phone very hot. My phone has um, reduce your speed. Oh yeah, it's supposed to slow down. Big corner, big corner. Wasn't paying attention. Big corner. You'll be right, mate. It's all good. Don't worry about it. There we go. Now I'm going to get a rough handling when I put power back on, aren't I? After the brakes finally release, there they go. They're coming off now. Rough handling, of course. I should have left it in notch one. That's where all the passengers go. Ah, me stuff's all over the floor. That next green. phone has um, a 12 core CPU and a 4 core GPU and it's ridiculously taxed playing trains. It's really really hot. Aviator the Wolf says he's contemplating one day going to run 8. The lack of passenger rail in that simulator is a huge turn off. They do have one passenger train, I think, from memory. It's um, California running on Barstow, I think. From 
memory. Do you like your American commuter? Yeah, they don't do commuter, they only do freight. Speaking of freight, there's one coming. It's rather a long one too. Must be double track through here or the uh, next signal would not be green, I suspect. Get that low in the middle so we can experience both trains. No, I don't want to right click on it. I just hope the HUD's correct and my next signal's green. I have streamed Run 8 before. It is, even if you run it in its simpler mode, it is quite complex to run. to play on one of the American servers, but when I did that I usually did dispatch, not driving. But I haven't for probably about two years, which means if I tried to get on, I probably wouldn't be able to. Hey, this is the chase camera, why are we inside the train? Why? 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 What's it doing? Oh, it's tied to the locomotive, isn't it? Yeah, that explains everything. Uh, we need to know... Oops. We need to know... What's up here? Uh, building another rail line. This is something I like about trains. See the bulldozers moving? That's just cool. Actually, they're not building a rail line. They're taking snow off an existing one. So they've had a landslide or something. Uh oh, going too fast again. Even in notch two, I'm going too fast uphill. What's going on? Slightly overpowered train. Hello, Brad. How are you? I mostly run trains. I know we're running Amtrak today, but mostly I run trains for Australian content because there's tons of it. There's not much officially from Oran, which is sad because they're an Australian company. But um, there is a lot of content out there in the community that you can download. Most of it's free. I even know one of its creators. Pulling up again. out of the whoops says he could only imagine doing run 8 with what Metro North Long Island Railroad they haven't got any electric MBTA Metro Link Scepter etc running some nice rolling stock with dispatch and realistic physics is such a dream it could be good I have a faint suspicion though running commuting would be beyond most dispatch people in run 8 because it requires a little more attention to detail than they used to. Because it's actually not that hard to dispatch in run eight. You just got to keep an eye on what's on your board and what's moving around and organize your crosses and things like that, which isn't too hard when there's three to four trains an hour. Brad says he accidentally subscribed to a year's worth of trains plus. So you should try some Australian content. Yeah, you should. The advantage of Trains Plus, we're actually running Trains Plus today, the advantage of Trains Plus... Ah, thank you, Violet. I wonder who got that. But the, um, the, event, the cool thing about running Trains Plus is that you get a free... Well, not a free, but it's included a first-class download ticket, which means your downloads go quickly, not over several days like they do if you haven't bought one. What is out here? Oh, there's a stuck train. How weird. Ah. Such a train full of snow. Or a load covered in snow, anyway. 
there a locomotive at the other end? No, there isn't. No, nah, it's just a train of carriages just sitting there. That's kind of cool. And yes, I haven't actually run this scenario before, as you can guess. Ah, congratulations, Dave. You got the uh, membership from Violet. Thank you, Violet. It's very cool of you. There's a crossing out in the middle of nowhere, but there you go. Lots of snow. And I, of course, am speeding again. Change? Maybe not. I thought that switch was going left. Oh, we're coming up into the uh, construction area. I should have warned them, shouldn't I? Ten mile an hour. Oh well. I actually agree with that, Brad. Brad says some of the sounds on trains are superior to other simulators. The way trains does sound is significantly different to the others. So yes, it's quite good. Pretty typical of railway workers. There's one bloke working and one bloke watching just over here. I don't know what they're doing though. Just having a good whack. did C and W, but you don't want to deafen them. You don't blow the horn while you're going through the crew, because you will make them deaf. Blow the horn on the way. Alright, enjoy yourself, Aviator the Wolf. Thanks for dropping in. Aviator the Wolf does also stream train games. And planes. I have to speed up soon. Let you into a little secret from the Engineman's community, CNW. They all hate rail fans. Oh, 
plane tomorrow. That'll be fun. Not. I actually hate coming on planes, but, you know, sometimes you have to. Ten miles an hour uphill in the snow. No one likes a foamer C and W. Rail fans perhaps, some of them do. get on to um, the airline and make sure to link mine and my other harps bookings because they've been booked separately while we've chosen seats next to each other if I don't link them they can still move you this has happened before There are random nutters everywhere when you fly, that's very true. There's not very much tolerance of it these days, so they tend to turn the plane around if people get nutty enough and put it back on the ground. And then they get carted away and they get charged with interfering with the safe operation of an aircraft, as they do in Australia. And that basically pretty much buggers you for the rest of your life if you ever want to fly ever again, because you end up on the no-fly list. Lexic Dark says to wait to get in the plane, not fun. Being on the plane when it's a go, yay. I actually discovered something last time I went to America, which was quite a while ago, it was before COVID in 2019. I damaged my knee on that trip and I came back in a wheelchair. And that is an awesome way to get through security and customs. They just wheel you right down to the front of the line and you just go through. Much of the disgust of all the people that have been standing in the line for three hours. So it's kind of cool. enjoy normal flying until you've been in an almost crash. As we roll through Coal Creek. I didn't know Denver was in Corumburra. Brad says he's fine on planes until the turbulence starts. Do you ride roller coasters, Brad? Because that's what it is. I've been in some particularly bad turbulence. I lost 10,000 feet on a flight once. United 747 just went down. And eventually stabilised. It was probably only about eight, eight or nine seconds, but it felt pretty bad. That was one of those days when people learnt that when they say leave your seatbelt loosely fastened, they mean it, because lots of people were on the roof and on that day. Very exciting. Sad experiences on planes. 
I landed in Chicago once after the airport was closed and our plane declared a fuel emergency. Basically came down on the runway and pretty much just stopped. We just landed in the snow and got stuck. We stayed there for hours. And I've also been in a plane here coming back from the Gold Coast where they we waited hours to leave from the Gold Coast because there was a big storm in Melbourne and they figured it was going to clear so they let us leave Gold Coast. They were a little bit wrong. That was an interesting landing. Fan of crosswind approaches. something so wrong about flying into a runway almost sideways. These are good violets. There's all we all have days we can't type. For me it's most of them. CNW says they also do the same for children with ADHD. Well sometimes. Only if you're actually declared as disabled. Pilots had an engine give out on a flight. Yeah, that would be fun. Fortunately, most planes can actually fly on just one. Even a 747 can fly on just one. Not well, but they can. Ooh, that's weird things happening to the graphics there. Bit of an anti-aliasing fail. Yes, I think you're right there, Lexic Dark. Leave the lap belt on unless you need to go somewhere. But you wonder why the toilets don't have seat belts, doesn't it? Moderate turbulence is plus or minus 1G. Yeah, it is actually quite a lot. Seatbelt just loosely on. Had enough experiences to know that it's a good idea. C10s didn't so much have a bad service life, they just used to arrive without their tails. They used to arrive quite fast. In a very messy way. Sorry dude, no train for you. Is in his younger days he flew with the RAAF a few times. Every time it was a relief to get back on the ground. I could understand that. They push the limits a bit. Dark said he's done a Malaysian island landing with a plane at 45 degree crab. That felt weird. And the correction to straight on the tyres down. It is very weird. It's like that. Never feels right. I chose that avatar I've got in the bottom left or if it's uh, something the game picked. Trains actually blow their horns in the mountains. That's an interesting concept. I know the Swiss don't. The 
Swiss Gotthard Tunnel is reopening to freight today after their rather large accident. It's quite unusual to have derailment in Europe. So one of the tunnels is out of action, so it's only going to be running freight. All the passenger trains will be taking the scenic Z tour through two other countries. Trains can be better than planes, CNW, but not always. It'd be very difficult to get a train to Europe, for example. You get a bit wet. I'm going to assume from now on that you don't blow your horn in the mountains. Yeah, Swiss people are smart, Licks of Dark. The landscape's fairly realistic, I think, here. I don't know if it matches reality, but... So they probably use DEM data, so it probably does. I'm just letting it pick camera angles. It seems to work. It's a bit like the European approach to railway crossings. You don't blow your, blow your horn because uh, people just need to be smart enough to not be on railway crossings when trains come. I like this concept. I will get you its exact name when we finish the run. I don't know a way to get it before that. Unless it's in my stream description, it might be. I think this one actually comes with um, Trains 2022, so you might already have it. It's one of the core routes, I think. It's trains Plus is just Trains 2022 with extra subscription type stuff. you go into the launcher yeah Orbus and Hillsville are both pretty good um, Hillsville's quite a few shorter runs so you can get a run from Leodal to Hillsville over and done within an hour uh, Orbost is quite a bit longer Orbost if you want to run the full thing you need to invest about four or five hours in it but the scenery is really good Orbost is the first one that's got their really good lighting. So if you play that in the morning, do an early morning run on Orbust, Orbust, you'll um, or the afternoon ones, you'll see what lighting could be like in train simulation. Trains is unusual in that it uses its own engine. The other ones tend to use um, Unity or Unreal.
Those are a bit meh. Brad says his main gripe with trains is the inconsistency with locomotive control. Notch one to go up a one in fifty with a heavy train. Yeah, some are better than others, but a lot of them. But like, I'm in notch four, and we're climbing up a pretty steep one, three percent. Orbost, I think you'll find, is relatively good for physics. I run a mishmash of stuff on Hillsville. So. And look up, if you like Australian stuff, look up Zekrail. Z-E-C-R-A-I-L. He makes tons of Australian stuff. He's got lots of steam and he's got some other things. A lot of it's available through Trains Download Station. Some of it comes from his, his website. another volunteer at Puff. The locomotives I did on my um, Christmas special a couple of years ago were his. Hey, I've got some tech rail stuff, good. He's also a nice guy. Handling. Excessive curve speed. But the speed limit's 30. Sometimes this game's just silly. drive slower, tell me game. That just whacked me afterwards. Tunnel 14, here we go. Get me open again for a moment. I remembered to wash my cup this time. Last time I had it on the Loco, it's a good cup for the Loco because it's insulated. Which means the Loco doesn't make it hotter. But last time I was on the Loco, I um, didn't wash it and brought it to my desk and left this big oily mark on my desk. Life. Today. It's the 20th, isn't it? We're not too far away from uh, Dovetail's announcement. Yes, Lexic Dark, that is pretty much what I meant. Degrease and decarbonate. It's decarbonize. It's probably decarbonize. Decarbonate would be taking the bubbles out. hopped into the loco yesterday at Jembrook. It's probably about four. 
Every time he reached for something, I went, hot. He'd pull his hand away and he'd reach for something else. Hot. He'd pull his hand away and he'd reach for something else. Hot. His mum goes, is there anything you can touch? And I go, not really. It's hot. The life in a steam engine, it's either hot or oily or hot and oily. Reminds me, I need to check my logbook. Because I actually think it's been a year since I started. interesting how well that um, simulation translates to real life but the other way around doesn't really work oh that's backwards other way around real life trains translate fairly well to simulation but simulation does not translate to real life trains through simulation. A lot of railway companies do that. Duck suggests it's the theory versus practice thing. The difference is bigger in practice than in theory. Very much. It's very much like that. The simulators they don't tend to change much real professional training simulators do they can have all sorts of things happen to them but the um, gaming simulators don't change much based on the conditions so in icy conditions like this i'd be expecting slipping but we're not we're just driving you might be cruising along on a steam engine quite happily with 175 pounds in the boiler and then you suck in this big gulp of cold air somewhere and you drop down to 150 just like that try when I'm going uphill to keep my pressure between 160 and 180 and when going downhill I try to keep it between 160 and 170 you don't need as much downhill but you do need pressure to keep the pump working if you get down as low as 150 the pump won't work anymore and you won't have brakes after the third application that would not be fun. Be downright unfun. Uh, 
passengers might get an exciting ride though. Still turn when you're in this view. Train really does fit. Dark says, yes, all those exceptional circumstances are hard to get modelled or even use cases for. It becomes quite a big scope and then you get weird emergent behaviours when they combine. Yes, you do. On the trip before my last one, when I tried to run the injector to put more water in the boiler, I actually wasn't getting any water. So I ended up having to... Um, close the isolation valve and pull the strainer off and there was a big chunk of electrical tape in the strainer blocking it. Cleared all that shit out and put it back together and opened up the valve and off we went. It was fine after that. But the strainer was doing its job because if that had gotten into the injector that would have been bad. Injectors kind of work on the edge of physics. They're known principles, known practices. They work very well, but they're right on the edge. A little bit too hot, a little bit too cold, a little bit too much of this, a little bit not enough of this, and they won't work at all. It can be very temperamental things. And if you can't run your injector, you have to stop, because you can't put water in the boiler. And the reason, and you wouldn't even keep going until you had only a little bit of water in the boiler because you would have to stop straight away because you need to have the water in the boiler while you wait for someone to come and fix it. Because the train keeps using it even when it's sitting still. Yeah, fluid dynamics is very much a black art. It's a bit like RF antenna design. You can go through all the science of RF antenna design and the maths and the physics and everything else, or you can put a coke tan on a stick and achieve almost the same result. it is to Winter Park. So we're doing okay for time today. Climbing through the picturesque mountains. Oop, there's a gap in the scenery there.
I've lost the train. I can hear it. Okay. Back to the... Oh, that's why I couldn't find it. It was in a tunnel. And I'm being naughty again. Clearly. down there. A large landscape, isn't it? Kind of a landscape that a rosa should look like. But doesn't. Fix that. There we go. No more cursor for you. with the clack clack sound it's playing for track joints that wouldn't be there there's only one wheel set that's getting that noise nothing else is I think that statement's true for a lot of reasons Violet life is the exception Some more tunnel vision. The other AIs we'll see. Let's try to see how far it actually is. Not as easy as you would think. But we are going to see some more trains soon. I think that would be a lot of fun. No, I didn't actually get into the city and do the trams need to. I didn't yet. Can I make that further away? I can. Hello, Daniel Robert Jowett. How are you? Oh, dare I try a gratuitous bridge shot. How do I spin? That way. Got it. Eventually. 
Wow, look at the change in the angle coming out of the tunnel onto the bridge. That's because whoever did that thinks bridges are made flat. It's got a similar angle change where the carriages are actually touching each other coming off the bridge. Ah, it's interesting. Oh, coffee Violet. Hello, Golden Ticket 420. How are you? I am having a good weekend, thank you. How about you? Good to hear, Daniel. Hope you managed to sort that out. That signal up there looks kind of red, but the HUD says it's green, so I'm going to ignore it. Maybe it's for the other track. I think it must be. Checks, I hope. They've just finished playing in Transim World. I've been in massive pain all weekend because of kidney stones. Well, that sucks. You know how they come out, don't you? Prepare for discomfort. But you're absolutely welcome to come and chill for a little while. Why not? Are you playing in Transim World? What do you think the announcement on the 22nd is going to be? Speculation is perfectly okay. an unpleasant thing, Brad, because uh, apart from blowing them up with lasers, which he's done these days, there's only one way those things come out. Let's go 
that keeps looking like it's trending downwards, but it's just going onto the flat. Playing the Harlem line, that's a fun one. A little bit of Brighton, also fun. And for speculation, you prefer to be surprised. I won't spoil any surprises for you. I would get my nuts kicked if I did that. the name of a porn movie, Rough Handling. It's quite useful if you're feeling miserable to just get in and play some games, because it's a bit of a distraction from reality. Hey, this shot's actually something that I really like about trains that I wish some other simulation games would do. Notice how everything in the distance gets blurred. I actually think that's really cool because it limits what they have to draw, which keeps your frame rate up, and it actually looks quite good. I can't really answer that question, Brad MacArthur. Golden Ticket says they suck really bad. Yes, they do. And you get them, unfortunately, because of paralysis due to an accident in 2012. That's no good. Now, I know someone else who had a life-changing event like that. She's um, not in too bad a place mentally these days, but it was very challenging for her. Very, very challenging for her. She had a hang gliding accident. Kind of landed on her face, broke her neck. So if you go hang gliding, don't land on your face. It's a bad idea. distant blurring. And they still have shadows, but they're just low resolution. Notation of rail drive is a bit interesting because there's it varies the distance between notch three and notch four. sad golden ticket but I'm glad you've come out the other, the other side of it and have a life because a lot of people in your situation don't come as far so good on you couldn't imagine how difficult it is No. Hello. Currently playing Mary. Sorry, I almost said Mary Midland Mainline. Currently playing the Midland Mainline. That's one of the Skyhook ones. Which platform are you playing on, Mary? 
Golden Ticket says, life-changing is not even the word. Unfortunately, I've come to grips with it and found myself distracted by train simulation, one of the biggest passions and hobbies. That's good. Anything that gets you to a point where um, life is at least tolerable is a good thing. If train simulation brings you that, that's fantastic. Mexic Dark got T2 broken when he was 16. You get around pretty well for someone who's had that. If people haven't noticed, Lexic Dark and I actually know each other in real life. He's a farm boy out in the country. I do go and visit him occasionally. You're on PS4. Pretty cool. I was just thinking if you're on PC, there's actually a really good mod for uh, Midland Mainline that populates the scenery a whole lot more. But you can't do that on consoles, sadly. Today this train is that red. Oh. Uh oh. Here's some unrealistic physics. I just went from everything to nothing. <laughs> that was some very unrealistic physics. wonder why we're sitting here though and why we can't just go into the other track. B42 I think. Just judging by the shape but I can't say I'm an expert in these things. So does that mean these points up here are set wrong? Let's go have a look. Yep, they're set wrong. An AI train has control over this junction. Hmm. And I can't override it. And he's going to get stuck up there at those signals. He, she, it. Hubba. Maybe when it stops, I'll be able to unlock them. If it stops. Otherwise, we're going to witness a train crash. I think it's stopping. This could slow down our progress. Oops. Do smaller steps. There's Mr. BNSF here, he's stuck at the signal and I'm stuck at that signal. I can't change it! is stuck and is awaiting new instructions. Oh, maybe this is deliberate. change that junction now? No, because even though he's not... He's definitely Harry.
still going to be stuck here. Reserve for oncoming train. If I do. No. I think I'm not going to be able to change these points. Can I? Happens if I. Can I delete him? That's the question. Is there a way to do it? No delete object thing. Hmm. Well, that's a bit of a bugger, isn't it? What happens if I take him on? Now what are those points doing? So it still says an AI train, even though I've taken control of this one. Delete train. Yes. Are you going to do it then? Is that a no? Train. schedule. How about that? Aha! Now I've got to go down there before my train decides it wants to leave. Ah! Always a way to do things. catching up with the chat anymore. Uh, Lexic Dark says he's told he couldn't do a lot of stuff anymore and would have arthritis when he's 20. He proved them wrong. I have arthritis. It doesn't really stop me doing anything. It just hurts. And yes, golden ticket, insta-stop. That was certainly a, uh, a physically impossible stop, I would have to suggest. Mary says she has both of the Scottish roots as well. That's cool. I hope you enjoy those. I like Scottish Commuter, the um, Cathcart Circle one, because you can do speed runs. Because it's a circular thing, you can set up your own scenario that goes from Glasgow to Glasgow and see how quickly you can do it without derailing. It's good fun. Golden Ticket says he loves these models only. Been on them once when he was younger. Not too sure if it's the one who went to Ohio, though. Hope to see these in Train World, Train Sim World soon. I would like to see, definitely, an Amtrak diesel set come to Train Sim World 2. Was it 3, 4? It's Train Sim World. Let's just call it Train Sim World. That's going to be easier. Because, you know, versions on versions on versions. For the simple reason that it would be really handy to put them on all the freight routes. Because it's not worth their while to build an Amtrak route because you only get two trains a day. But if that. But you could put them on as a layer on all the freight routes. And that would be really good. I'm going to be a little bit careful because the points at the other end might be stuck too. So. We uh, won't go too hard out of here because I might have to do another impossible stop. CNW says, looks like the trains are stopped for an Amtrak. Well, I think we were both stopped for me. Golden Ticket says, I saw a few of your shorts of you driving a train. That's pretty nice. I just recently started to like Steam. Steam is a lot of fun. It's... I don't think there are any games that simulate Steam well. Because it's, um... Complex. For something that has so few controls, there are so many things that can happen that influence what's happening with your train that uh, it can be a bit interesting.
Violet said she loves the sound of steam included in her coffee machine. Excellent. Yeah, I think that's right, Golden Ticket. It's just simpler to say Transim World, isn't it? And interestingly, um, the story of... I don't know if you've noticed or not, but you've probably noticed it's ts2prototype.exe. So it was always going to be Train Simulator 2. To replace Train Simulator Classic. The driving simulation's not done too badly, but no one does a good firing simulation. I think if the the reason for that is twofold, the people who build simulators have no clue how to fire steam engines. That's blatantly obvious because they just go, "I'll oh, just put more coal in, maintain an ideal fire mass." Yeah, nah. And they think steam's magic, and it just comes from nowhere. Definitely doesn't. We've got a green at the end there, so our points must be fine. In fact, this is a good opportunity for a bit of thrash. Brad asks, is there a train simulator where you can just fire the locomotive and not have to drive it as well? Yes! In TS Classic, a couple of smoke boxes trains have that capability where you can be the fireman and they have an AI driver. The big boy does it and I think the challenger does it as well. So yes, you can have an AI driver. But they're still not particularly realistic. So even if you think of a firebox, so let's think of the firebox that I use, which is a cubic meter, basically. It's three cubic feet, but let's just call it a cubic meter for simplicity. When you're first taught to fire, you're taught that there are nine positions in the firebox and that you put a shovel full of coal into each position to make sure that you've always got coal on the bed everywhere because if you've got a hole somewhere and you can see fire bars or you're beginning to see fire bars you're getting an enormous amount of cold air come through that's not being heated or not being heated very much and that leads to a, a substantial drop in pressure but the reality of that nine firing positions is multiply that by about a hundred but they never teach you that way to start because that just does your head in because what you've got to think about is if you put a shovel full of coal, so you've got a shovel, it's about so this long, holds about five kilos, five and a half kilos. Um, if you just put that into each of those positions, you're still going to have these massive holes where there's no coal. So you have to fill the fire bed floor, but fires have to have a shape as well. So when you're steaming a lot, our engines like to have a horseshoe. So they like a really thin middle and front, but the sides and the back have to be really, really banked up and built up. Because that's what they like to steam properly. And locomotives are all different. Some locomotives like an even spread. Some of them like you to fire light and often. Some of them like you to fire heavy and shut the door and walk away. Ours are a bank with light and often. gets best results because the box is so small that every every shovel full of cold you put in there and I said cold deliberately not coal you've got to wait for that that to, to actually ignite and start to burn and give off the the gases that also ignite and start to burn before it gets any heat energy so every shovel full of cold coal that you chuck in there that's a cold spot until it ignites and heats up and that takes a while 
takes a good five minutes for a shovel of coal to get really, really active. Now, operating steam engines on the flat, I would suggest anybody could do it with a few minutes of instruction, you'd be fine. It's when you get onto hills that it gets more interesting and when you get into difficult conditions and the track is slippery, that's when it gets a lot more difficult. But the principles are, are pretty much the same as what you see here. You've basically got a reverser, a throttle, and a brake. So you've got the same controls that you do in a diesel, really. And they work pretty much the same way. It's just that the um, control is less direct and it's slower. So in a diesel, if you knock off the throttle, you'll come off the power immediately because it'll stop generating electricity that's being used by the traction motors and the train will start to slow down straight away. If you come off the throttle on steam, you've still got to wait for all of the pressure in your steam chest to vent before it makes much difference. Mary says, I would love to see the full West Highland Line from Glasgow Queen Street to Oban Fort William. Mauling for TSW. That'd be a cool one to get a bit more Scottish. That could happen because it's the uh, native place for, I think, rivets there. And I think Skyhook might be more north as well. So you never know. Let's see what they come up with. It's okay to be biased because you used to live there. It's like here, if we got an Australian route, I'd want our electric commuter route with the um, tail end diesel bit to Stony Point because it's good variety. But that's because I live here. Other people would probably want something different. Mexic Duck got to fire in a coal-fired power station during training training simulator when he was young. Dedicated hardware, though. It's not like it can't be done. Oh, you definitely can simulate things better than the games do. If you've got an infinite budget, you can do anything you want. See if I can time this right for a gratuitous bridge shot. Ha, victory. Yes, Violet, shove it in, just doesn't work. That's it, exactly. And when you first start to fire, that actually is your mentality. Just fill it up with coal, it'll be fine. Well, you soon learn that doesn't work. And if your trainer's any good, your trainer will let you do that and learn why. Learn why it's a bad thing. And not only do you have to balance the amount of fuel you're putting in to go uphill along with the amount of water, and you're trying to... Water's another source of cold, so you've got to put in cold water and fuel. When you're going uphill, you've got to put in both at the same time all the time, but in other situations, you try and do one or the other. But the, the other aspect of firing is when you're firing hard up a big hill and you're putting lots of coal in to go up the big hill, you still have to be thinking in here about what's going to happen when you get to the top. You need to have enough water so that when the loco tilts and all the water runs forward in the boiler, that you don't expose the crown sheet. You need to think about how much water you've got. You may need to actually stop or slow down as you approach the crest to make sure you do have enough water because not having enough is a disaster. We're all trained right from the first day that if you have to make a choice between steam pressure and water, you choose water every time. It does not matter if the train stops, you must be safe. So that's drilled into us constantly. But the, the other thing you have to think about when you're going over the top is how hot's your fire going over the other side because you don't want a lot of heat going over the other side. If you've got a massively built up fire all the way up the hill, and then you go over the other side, you're not going to be able to stop it blowing off. And that just wastes coal and it wastes water. But what's probably more important is that it's so loud that the driver can't hear the train anymore. And a lot of the feedback from driving the train and braking actually comes from sound. So it's a good way to make your driver hate you.
Sometimes it's not completely avoidable. I've had plenty of people I've been out training with and they go, well, I don't blow off down hills, but I've seen them do it, so, you know. It is what it is sometimes. Yeah, right, it is difficult to learn in real life, but it's not impossible because I've been doing it for a year, but that's 18 steam trips. And that's because I do it a couple of times a month. So could you learn quicker? Absolutely. But you'd need to devote a lot of time to it. You'd also have to be a lot younger than me because if I fire, like I, it, at Easter time, I did three trips and that really hurt. That took me a good two weeks to recover from that. I couldn't do another trip for a couple of weeks. the floor for that kind of crossing. So if you wanted to learn quick, be young. Young and very fit. You get a lot fitter as you fire, I certainly have. It's a bit of a life changer. It does cause other problems too. Yeah, running a train down steep gradients, especially with an old-fashioned braking system like ours, is, is quite challenging. Because we do only have the good old-fashioned 1930s Westinghouse system. Sick Dark says you'd want an expert fireman, no mathematician, to sit with the developers and train them. Yeah, look, you, you could certainly do it. You could build a train game that properly implemented firing, but how many people would actually keep playing something that was hard? There would be a small subset of people that were really dedicated and wanted to learn it and would do everything they could to learn it and they'd be the kind of people that um, disappointment didn't adversely affect them and that they could keep going in those circumstances. See, super elevation, trains does do it. <laughs> Got a nice lean on that curve. We don't cross the big bridge, we just go past it, damn it. Uh, we don't cross the big bridge. Forget about the big bridge. It's all good. Don't worry about the big bridge. Spending so much time concentrating on bridges, I was forgetting about my train. That's all right. So we have to see what actually will happen with um, a firing simulator that unique because I think it would have be a very small market. I don't think I'm particularly unique in that if I find a game too hard to play, I just delete it. And I know everyone's different, but... Golden Ticket would love to see Australian, Dutch or Japanese route for Train Sim World. That would be nice as a bundle. I think we will see something Asian because um, Union Workshops are involved in Train Sim World now. Union Workshops make a lot of Japanese and Chinese routes for Train Sim Classic. So I dare say they're learning the tools currently and hopefully we'll if they decide that the tools are worth it hopefully we'll see something out of them in the not too distant future i personally would like some japanese stuff because um japanese commuter railroads are quite unique i 
Cost training is a big investment, says Lestic Dark. Yes, it is. This is a very famous tunnel portal. Well, in railway world, anyway. It's a very big tunnel. Dynamics now. Top one on dynamics is going to hold this thing. Hello, poor house. How are you? Hope you're well. Bridges are always fun, golden ticket. Lexic Dark says, I have noticed you bulking up in the arms and shoulders over the last months. Yeah, legs too. Because, of course, every time you shovel, you squat, rip the door open with your left hand, both hands on the shovel, lift up about about 30, 40 centimetres, launch into an appropriate position in the firebox with the appropriate amount of jiggle so that you spread the coal, not land it in a lump. And, uh, you have to squat, and you normally fire three shovels at a time. So it's down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up while you do that and then back up to full height so that you can observe because you have to get up to full height to observe your chimney because you look at the chimney to see the colour of the smoke because if you have gone clear and which is when you need to fire generally you're looking for a, a grey haze to a dark smoke depending on the whole coal and if you don't see anything then you miss the hole and you've got to have another crack Good fun. Uh, I think some aspects of train scenery are better than train sim world poor house. I think they've actually got lighting right. Train sim world hasn't managed that yet. I find I like the time of day three lighting at certain times of the day, but in the middle of the day they've booked it. It's just not good. And I think that stems from unreal lights things as though it's lighting for a digital camera but we aren't digital cameras we're humans and we see a different range of light and that's what we need to do but that said there's an awful lot of unreal games that get lighting really really well done so i think the train sim world people have got a bit to learn about lighting and they really should i really hope that that they do listen to the feedback at some point that the lighting in the middle of the day is horrible ticket says that Union have already selected a route. Well, that's good. I didn't see it in the last roadmap. Did they actually announce what route it was or did they just say that they've picked one and they're working on it? I assume it'll turn up in the beta at some point but I haven't seen anything. Not that I could tell you if I had seen something. That would get me kicked out. It is a good workout. Yeah, if I look at Fitbit, in fact I can uh, grab my phone now, you don't do this when you're driving. We actually keep them in a little box when we're driving, when we're operating a loco. They, they go into a box on the front of the train. Uh, where is the little Fitbit app? So I'll give you an idea, I don't know how well this will come over in the view. Is the train doing? Train's okay. So, there's a, oh well, this is going to work, there's a normal kind of day, you know, doing stuff, heart rate up and down a little bit, and then we look at 
a steam firing day. You can tell exactly where the hills are on the railway. And it's basically um, 25 minutes of peak exercise, 7 hours 17 minutes of cardio with 4 hours 13 minutes of fat burn. So it's, um, it's a better workout than you can get in a gym because no one would go to a gym for 12 hours. You just wouldn't do it. house says and you're right wouldn't get derail because it's much to do I don't mind derail valley now the, the derail valley simulator release is actually okay I'm kind of getting into it so expect to see it streamed more Four house this one is from a company called N3V it's called Trains T R A I N Z it's available on mobile and PC uh, the routes on mobile aren't quite as extensive as the ones on PC and it's been around for a really 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 long time it's all it's as old as Train Sim Classic and it's um much older than Train Sim World <coughs> excuse me and this is their latest generation of it, Trains Plus, which is essentially the 2022 release. Um, plus you can get easier access to other content without having to pay through the nose for it. I've got a Trains Plus Silver, which means that I do buy additional routes, but there's a lot of stuff that just comes with Silver. You can get Trains Plus Gold, which gives you everything, but it's about double the price every year. But if you like downloading a lot of stuff, Trains Plus Gold is not bad value compared to the individual cost of the DLC. So I think it's 120 a year, and you can blow 50 bucks on one route. So pay 120 a year, and you can have everything. So it's it's quite good if you like lots and lots of varied content. Golden Ticket says they picked one, no announcement yet, and agree Train Sim World lighting really needs to be done right because it's pretty immersion breaking at times. Playing with cloudy weather is decent. Yeah, I agree. When it's an overcast day, um, it's actually quite nice. And at dawn and dusk, it's quite good, quite really good. And the, the most recent routes at night have been really good too. It's just the right balance of darkness so that you know it's dark, but is just enough that you can see so you can still play it which is important Violet has some lols Poor House is wondering if Train Sim World 4 is really going to be that different well you'll have to wait and see what they announce and whether your speculation is Train Sim World 4 or something else won't you Poor House you haven't got long to wait two more days 22nd I believe they said and I think today is the, uh, the 20th, so yeah, two more days to wait, this Tuesday. You haven't got a PC for gaming, poor house. You don't actually need a particularly grunty PC to run trains, to run it at the, the highest settings you do. But even this at the highest settings is not making my PC work that hard. I can't hit the fans, for example. There's a bit of hot air coming out of it, but not, not extreme. I have to say the hot air that comes out of the top of my PC is quite nice for my fingers. It's, you know, it's one of the one of the excitements of steam firing, it just accelerates all the other changes that happen to you. Boran's ever thought about a console version of Trains. I've seen anyone talk about one, so who knows? This is a very long tunnel, isn't it? Yes, heated seats are good. Oh, it's inspiration suit. Very nice coming off the firing shift at the end of a long winter's day and jumping in the car with the heated seat is very nice. All right. Thanks for joining in, Brad. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day.
change or I brought it down to the speed limit before the speed changes. Violet. Stop here and let all the bunnies off. So they can go and play in the snow. to disembark. Let's see if they really do. Oh, there they are. What is this guy doing? What is he doing? What a strange creature we have. And there's our little resort town. There's a traffic over there on the freeway. We go to the next town. Seed to Freezer. And to sit here and graphics should win. Why am I calling my passengers bunnies? Because they're snow bunnies. Have you never heard of snow bunnies? Now proving that gravity always wins. W says superliners be trying to be like freight cars. Well, they are basically the same thing, you know. Golden tickets they ask, what does top green light mean together with the bottom red light? It's one for freight liner, one for passenger. No, it's just a different signalling system. So, signalling systems all over the world, even in the same country, vary a lot. Um, a lot of signalling systems have two lights on them. So that if you don't see two lights then you um, are seeing a signal that's faulty. So we use green over red here too. Green over reds basically proceed. Red over greens proceed slowly. Head down the hills on dynamics now. Did I forget CNW? But did I just not do it? Maybe I did it just to get that response out of you. Okay, 
if your locomotive is already out of the platform, why would you bother um, running your bell? House wishing peace for everyone. It's good to know that you have such a wise knowledge sources Instagram, CNW. most of the time for house. Mm -hmm. Frank. Oops, too much. The little one. It's only a baby train. run a freight train with um, this route if there's a scenario built for it. We'll have a look. See why it is smooth though. Look at the locos now. One of them's turned into a box. So as things get further away, they reduce the resolution of everything, and it helps with the uh, ability of the engine to draw things with a decent, decent enough rate. An empty train down to the turnaround point. I can understand why they wouldn't want to do the run around on the gradient they were on back there, but... They also cheat, because... Oh no, those wheels actually are moving. It's only maybe it's only the loco wheels that don't turn. Cruise our way through Ski Bunny Town. have track noise golden ticket probably a little bit too much of it to be honest because this would be continuous welded rail it wouldn't be jointed track Mr. Game. I'm happy now.
mod ticket the um most of the modern stock in this game does sound pretty good some of the older stuff leaves a bit to be desired the way they do the sound is quite good i mean they, they basically built an engine that was designed to simulate trains and the noises trains make so it's quite good at it it's not a generic engine They can always have as many many challenges or as many channels as they want. Whereas Train Sim World's limited to 16 channels and Train Simulator's only got one. Yeah, a lot of local rail will have jointed track. But even um, things like Caltrain, their track's not jointed. It's continuous welded. Or as I usually call them, Caltrain. Still keep threatening to make a livery with a cow on it. I'll have to do that one day. DTG do announce their thing on Tuesday. As usual, I'll um, read through any written stuff they have for people who need it for accessibility. But I'll also um, make a shorter version because the roadmap streams and announcement streams are always very long-winded and they go down bunny holes and I'll make something shorter. It's a little easier to, to digest. So there is a premiere coming up on YouTube for uh, their announcement if you haven't already seen it or a stream anyway coming up. Actually, it might be a premiere, thinking about it. I don't think it is a stream, because you have to register for it, which you don't normally have to for streams. To the town of Fraser, which naturally appears to have a cost code. As it would. Imagine that big flat roof in the snow. That really wouldn't go well, would it? Just collapse. Mary says the sound of the train is making her sleepy. Yeah, it's kind of white noise, I guess. Like, yeah, yeah, it could. Ticket says, I know at some point TSW will eventually get the sound to the right point for each country. There's going to be a lot of patience. now. Clean to the yard. Need to be left running. Mm -hmm. I do remember that um, on our giant RV trip across America, About 25 days into it, sick of the RV, and we thought, let's just get a hotel for one night, just to sleep in proper beds with proper showers that you don't have to um, go walking to get to. And but it'd just be nice to have a nice, comfortable night for a change. So we go and we stop at this hotel that was pretty much in the middle of nowhere. It was just, I don't know, somewhere. 
somewhere in Ohio, I think, and um, set in, got to sleep, and about 2 a.m., this train with half a dozen diesels on it pulled up outside the hotel, and they left the train running, and the crew left. They obviously didn't have a replacement crew. So they just left it there for the whole night, going boom, 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 boom. Kind of annoying. Kind of ruined the whole concept of having a good night's sleep. And makes you wonder why they'd build a hotel next to a change point. Someone didn't do their research. That refunding the room. It's like, nah. I'm spending a whole night where I can't sleep and paying for it. They don't need to keep the brakes charged, CNW. It's called putting handbrakes on, and that's not why they do it at all. They do it because diesels don't like to be turned off. Is it going to stop? Maybe. You can stop now. Don't run through the red light. Don't do it. 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 How close is it going to be? Oh, I think we made it. Ooh, scores. There you go. Let's have a look. What did happen to the last ten? I ran away with my life fast forward and never turned back again. It's kind of funny that the more we pass time, the more we need to set the rewind. And 19 was the year I had to leave you, but now I'm seeing all the signs. Is this really happening? I can't believe it's true. I'm just as surprised as you.
center anything on this thing? No, it's gone back to DCC. Just for ding dong, I'll put the bell on. It says he liked the car models in this game. The first time I went to Ohio for two weeks to see my grandpa. It took two days on Amtrak and was very uncomfortable. Yeah, trains aren't necessarily comfortable. If you buy a sleeper, they tend to be quite nice, but if you didn't, they're not generally. CNW says his friend used this sound for his rent video. Well, there you go. Copyright violation, here we come. Golden Ticket says, I think the Rockies would be nice, but only because I like those passenger trains where you can see out the double-deckers. They're called observation cars. Just going to turn that down for my ears. How's the sound levels for people? Oh, it's a big train, isn't it? Look at that. A whole three cars. Massive. the Starlight Express and the Daylight. I get the Starlight Express from Portland in Oregon to uh, Los Angeles and I did the Daylight the other way around. I only went as far as San Francisco on the Daylight though. Oakland as it really is there. It doesn't actually go into San Francisco, it goes into Oakland. Get off at Jack London Square. I do notice about trains is um, well let's let's start with the airflow indicator it actually works that's nice and all of the gauges are actually branded there's um, TSW and TSC they don't tend to put branding on things squeezed for in somehow Ticket says, there you go, that's the name, Observation Cars. Yep. I don't know why American ones would be more expensive than others. Don't know. Let us know what you find out. along with their little freight train. Well, the ticket says the Cajon Pass route that it got for TSW blues goes right past the observation train there. Yeah, quite possibly. Be a good route to have passenger on. I 
think I had my question about whether the game just uses your avatar now. Because, look, he's different. And he looks like a German train driver to me. Union Pacific train drivers just look like a bloke. They don't have a uniform. squeezed for you. Union Pacific, priding ourselves on waking everybody up since 1978. do just was going to heal. Slow it down because I want to hear what it sounds like starting off in Notch 8. This seems like a fair thing to do really. out again. in this sound. Sounds alright going hard. Easy cruise uphill here. Chuck it in notch two and put your feet up on the desk. I hope no more on pipes a truck across the railway line. Or a bus. I saw some one on YouTube had put together a um, compilation trains versus truck, train versus bus, train versus car, like a 
amusing to watch. Especially all the people who stand there next to their car going, stop. Uh, yep, it'll stop in about two miles, mate. You can already hear it's gone into emergency. down before we got there. It's a little tiny train. Oops. It's not up eventually. Oh, there it is. Depends on the size of the freight train, CNW. And how heavy it is. And what the dynamics of breaking it are. Generally speaking, you'll probably find Freight driver would be more likely to do a normal service brake than go into emergency because you will, generally speaking, stop quicker from a service brake than you do in emergency. Because in emergency it actually locks the wheels up and they slide. bridge shot. A tiny little train. Brake trains sometimes do derail in emergency. It's not from braking though. It's because the track brakes. Generally going into emergency is a factor of it having derailed, not the cause of it derailing. Nick. Rocky. No, we're not too far from Rocky. This is a fairly good representation of the Colorado High Desert. There's not much in it.
of an awkward mouse move, but you can do it. You have to move the mouse up to push the window to the right. trains will only derail for if they hit something that takes them off the track or if the track itself fails or you get something like an axle failure or a bogey that's hunting too much or something like that they're the general kinds of causes for derailments oh and running ridiculously long trains that is another reason why derailments are more common in America and tend to be a bigger disaster when they do happen running trains that long when you're going around corners the stresses on the train are massive because if you go around a corner that even if it's a very gentle corner that takes you in 90 degrees to um, where half your train is some of it's trying to go in one direction and the other half of the train is trying to go in an entirely different direction and that's the stresses in that are huge we are now approaching rocky I should probably slow down then Break noises. colors or for the Americans fall don't do that sand w Yeah, it's often the case, Golden Ticket, the infrastructure is outdated. I know there's a lot of bridges. America is a little different in the way it works compared to Australia. Generally speaking here, the actual railway infrastructure belongs to the government. The operators are private. So it tends to be relatively well maintained most of the time. There are times when it could be better, but most of the time, it's okay. Uh, and derailments in this game aren't realistic, but trains do fall over. It is possible to make them derail. Derail Valley's not... Um, too unrealistic. I think I might have slowed down a little early. pushing it back up there. It said something about a quarry and that does look like a quarry up there, doesn't it?
if you like derailments golden ticket i would have a look at derail value because um if you roll some tank cars over for example they do actually explode it's kind of cool things do get broken Stopping us before those points or after? It's half a mile, so I'm guessing after. And then we'll probably push it back up the hill, I'm guessing. Yeah, it is after. I can see the yellow marker now. information but it doesn't Turn on the Y, enter the main. Wait for the brakeman to set the road. Has he? Yep. be enough. Ticket says, don't get me wrong, I play the game of one arm, but I complete full timetables and barely make any mistakes. Like if I I do like realism, which is why I asked me about the derailments. Oh, that's cool. I think the only reason most train games don't really model derailments is because of the branding on the locomotives. Wait for our bloke now. Propel the hoppers up the bank to the aggregate plant at the north end of the spur. We'll drop the empties and pick up loaded hoppers. Very good. Well, the ticket says the most I do when it comes to errors, which is probably the worst of all, is your occasional spads at the end of some of the German services, mainly because the light is so close to the green point. Yeah, 
and you've been driving along for three hours and then suddenly you have to stop and it's like ah! yeah oh, I know that feeling couple and uncouple in this game. I think maybe if I just hover hover over the oh, maybe you need to be stopped. See there's a coupling mode. interesting thing for you that'll freak out CNW. I'm approaching a road. In America, freight trains going backwards approaching a road don't have to sound the horn. Why is it different? Oh, it really does happen, but you know. I think license holders don't like to see their stuff getting smashed up, I guess. I'm just assuming this thing's putting me on the right track. There? I didn't see any. Let's go have a look over there. Is there anything over here? It's just logging anyway, so no. So I guess we are going to the right direction. Sometimes I don't like the way this thing works. There's some busted hoppers. Probably not what you were thinking of. CMW is now madly running through. Oh, bad. Don't go so far. Oh, well. go back to the train. I don't know where we ended up. Maybe they have to do bells. We can do bells. With that now, CMW, since you've laughed your ass off, you look funny with that one. You'll fill up and it'll explode. I, think I do see some hoppers materializing in the distance up there as little blocks at the moment. noises to protect people who should know better. 
mind you, I do see some of the people that I've been involved with in the railway who have been around the railway for a very long time just walk straight across tracks. It's like, dude. And they go, but nothing's moving. And I go, how do you know? It doesn't even have to be an active set. It could be something that's just rolling by accident. It's still going to kill you. Interesting configuration of points up there. <laughs> Leave it parked across the road because, you know, railways. That's what you do. You can stop now, train. Honest. How about there? No? What about there? Alrighty. Beelzebub off. Cook. I don't remember how you do this. Right quick. Decouple. worked. You know, we're not going to fit through there, so I don't think we'll try that. It almost looks like you'd make it, but not quite. Oi! Fine, go back to the train. Sit. vegetable controls, didn't you? That one. says he watched a guy a few days ago climb over a stop train with his bike in hand. Yeah, some people are just monumentally dumb. You actually see it in Frankston quite a bit. They um, close the pedestrian crossing at the end of the station quite a long be time before the trains are actually ready to go. The net result of that is it encourages very poor behaviour with uh, how do you set that way? With people just crossing over. Got it automatically changes ends in this game. You have to go and run around this thing on the way. the other end or did I go to, no, I've gone to another train that's not what I want that's another train I want to go back to my train right there we go
go. Golden ticket says Michael followed up with seconds later the train started to reverse. Yes. Golden ticket says I love Freightliner a lot too, but not in Train Sim World. Nothing fun about it whatsoever in my opinion. Love the way they look with the sounds are again just not there. I would suggest if you like the sounds and you like realistic freight, um, Run 8's probably not a bad bet for you. Because um, it's very realistic and there's some good switching. I'll call them scenarios. It doesn't call them scenarios in Run 8. Let's just call them that. That's the name everybody's used to. And the sounds are really good. You can hear the, the sounds of individual rubber blocks and things in the freight carriages moving around, which is cool. Uh, you don't have to buy subscriptions, David Park. You've never had to buy a subscription. You can buy a subscription. You can buy them route by route, should you desire. But if you buy them route by route, it's about $50 for a route. If you buy a subscription, you get access, depending on your subscription level, to more content for less money, effectively. So the silver subscription, which gets you a, a download ticket and a, a bunch of content, is about 60 odd dollars a year, and the content changes every year, and you keep the stuff that you keep the stuff that you've got. But you always have the game. So even if you stop subscription, you keep the game and you keep anything that you've downloaded in that time. But if you want to buy a subscription to get access to more content, you can. Uh, if Run 8's another one, it does have coupler damage. So you can overstretch a coupler, you can crush them, you can break them with a rough start. And then you have to go and fix them. It's good fun. Generally speaking, trains don't, they have gears that they drive with, but they don't have a gearbox like a car, but I know what you mean. You don't have to buy a subscription, David. I only bought a subscription last year, and I've had trains since, well, trains 2000 and something or other. 2004, I think, the original one. So you don't actually have to buy a subscription. What you do need to do if you don't have a subscription is from time to time buy the download tickets. Yes, no Run 8 on PlayStation, sadly. They've never done a, a console port of it. The, the good aspects about Run 8 is that it runs quite happily on a potato. Because its graphics are um, kind of shitty, you can run it on anything. So if you have got a PC kicking around that's not a very powerful one, you could probably run run 8 on it, as long as it wasn't too, too ridiculously old. <laughs> you need a better CPU than you do graphics card. how sometimes it just stops on a uh, very quickly and this time not. Given those two locomotives would outweigh those freight cars even with them being full. They're 
dispatcher has already given us authority to proceed onto the main line. Fantastic. independent brake for that, it's nice and quick. Be a heavier load than it looks. It's having the ability to brake the train can actually cause you to drive differently, yes. You have to behave yourself a little bit more. If you run, there's a, an all day one on the Basto route, I think. It's an all day switching scenario and it's a, a local freight that picks up and drops off at about, it's probably about 15 places, maybe a couple more than that. It literally takes eight hours to drive it in run eight. I quite like it. I think I streamed it once. actually manage it quicker, David, because you'd, you'd probably drive faster than, than I would, except for there's a couple of things to be aware of with Run 8. When you connect up a new carriage or a new train, you've got to pump it up, and that takes a while. And when you disconnect and leave your train on the main and go and get some other carriages and pump them up and cut them put back on your train, you have to get the brakes set up again. It takes a while. That's why I say it's realistic. Put that train up there waiting for us. Poor train. Waiting for the, that great big freight, waiting for this little tiny freight. Oh well. Maybe I should stream Run 8 again at some point. Happened for a long, long time. I think since about 2020, to be honest. Ticket says, wow, eight hours. Longest I played any run was 11 hours on Long Island Railroad Route for TSW 2020. When you're hooked on the game, you even have a picture on the forums. It's cool. Might help if we actually get to our stop point, huh? It's pretty taste does that quite a lot. He'll spend an entire day running a um, full set of shifts for a driver.
one coming out after this one will be the answer, David. This one's got the start of their next generation of lighting in it, but the um, next stuff coming out has got the new really high res routes, and there's one in progress at the moment. And there's a few of the old routes are getting updated. So I'll be very interested to see how they look. I saw the points change down there, I did. We'll see what happens. It'll either spat me or it won't. Yep, spatted me. Oh well. But if I don't dismiss that message box, guess what? I can just keep driving. No, I can't. Used to be able to keep driving. Bummer. Oh well. That's life, isn't it? I don't know why those signals didn't change, because it said go out on the main, and the points were set. Trains, like all the other games, not without its bugs. Anyway, that's probably a good enough time to end for today, because it's actually a little bit over time anyway, but it was fun. So, um, thanks for all the chats. Um, freight can be a bit of a challenge. Yes, can definitely be a bit of a challenge, because it's... If you, in run eight, for example, you might pick up a freight run that um, literally runs for 11 hours and you're just driving and you don't do anything else. You just drive. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, can be a bit of, bit of a challenge. I like the switching ones in run eight. I, I generally don't do the really long things. I do the switching ones because to me, they're fun. I know switching doesn't stream that well. A lot of people go, I don't want to watch this. But I find it quite interesting. And it's good stuff to do. Anyway, thank you very much for joining in today, folks, and watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves and found it entertaining. And Tuesday is the big day for Train Sim World to find out what's coming up. And yeah, I know, there's been a ton of leaks and there's lots of speculation and lots of rumours. And I'll wait for the announcements and we'll see what's coming out. And we'll have a chat. Might even have a chat on Tuesday night. You never know. See what people think, eh? We can run through it and see what people think about it. We'll see. I think they'll do it... Might have to be... Timing-wise. I think they're things at about 1am for me. Something like that. So maybe Wednesday morning for me. We'll maybe have a chat about it before I go to work. Alrighty. Have fun, folks. Enjoy yourselves. And we shall see you next week. I have not decided what I'm going to run next week. I'll figure it out. Alrighty. Enjoy. See you later. Thanks for watching, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. I always like to get your feedback in the form of likes and comments because they help me understand what you want. Give the channel a subscribe and click on the tinkly things so you don't miss out on any new stuff. And thanks for your ongoing support. And please, be safe out there.